Over the years, I've received quite a few requests to talk about my favorite knitting reference books. And I've wanted to do a video about that for a long time now, but then I thought, I wonder what your favorite knitting books are. So I did a little poll on Instagram. What is the one knitting reference book you use the most? And I specifically wasn't looking for pattern books, but rather books with information about techniques or solutions to common problems and things like that. And I got some great responses. Some of your favorite knitting reference books are also my favorites, and some I didn't even have in my collection, so I went to my local library and checked them out. So if you're interested in hearing about what my viewers and I think are the best knitting reference books, then keep on watching for a countdown of the top 10. Hi everyone and welcome back to U University. I'm Dr. Kelly. Wow, it's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, I took a little unplanned sabbatical over the summer and didn't record any videos. That wasn't my intention, but I had a really nice summer and hope you did too. Just a quick recap of what I did this summer. Um, well, we went to the cabin in Minnesota for a couple of weeks and when we got home, one of my major projects this summer was cleaning the basement and purging a lot of stuff, so I got that almost done. Um, our cat died at the beginning of the summer, which was really hard and sad, um, but he was 16, so it wasn't completely unexpected. And then that prompted me to start volunteering at one of our local animal shelters, which is where we adopted him from all those years ago. And they have a nice new uh, building and beautiful space for the dog kennels and cat colony. Um, over the summer, this, the animal rescue found out about a hoarding situation here in town. And with the help of the local police, we rescued over 80 cats from one house. It was very heartbreaking, but we were able to adopt out almost all the cats so far. Anyway, school started up again this past week, so I've been busy getting things ready for my classes. It's going smoothly, and I'm enjoying interacting with my students again. So that's what I've been up to. And thank you to everyone who's contacted me to make sure that I'm okay because they haven't seen any videos pop up in a while. Yes, everything's fine. I just kept getting sidetracked by other things all summer. <laughs> but. I do have so many topics that I want to make videos about, and today I'm going to be talking about favorite knitting reference books. Like I said, I did a little poll on Instagram probably a couple of months ago now, and I was really interested in your responses regarding the one knitting book you can't live without. A lot of your picks coincided with mine, but I didn't have a few really popular ones, so that gave me the opportunity to go look at them. From my poll, there were seven clear winners that had a lot of votes, and then I added three of my own favorites to the mix to make a total of 10. So I thought I would format this video as a countdown because, well, I like to do that, starting with my three favorites and then counting down to our number one recommended knitting reference book. And by the way, I will include links to all these books in the information box down below. So let's get right into it. All right, at number 10 is one of my favorite go-to knitting books, and that is The Field Guide to Knitting by Jackie Pavlovsky. This is a small pocket-sized book that is fashioned after the field guides for wildlife that you can easily take with you to the location where you're gonna be encountering the plants or animals. But rather than plants or animals, this one contains knitting stitches. It's kind of like a small stitch dictionary, but it contains so much more than just the pattern instructions. The thing I love about this book is that it tells you how much yarn each particular pattern tends to use, and it's rated on a scale from one to five. The author uses plain stockinette stitch as a standard with a rating of three right in the middle, and patterns that use considerably less yarn are rated one or two, and those that are basically yarn hogs are rated a four or five. So this rating system tells you whether you might want to buy some extra yarn for a project 
or that you probably don't need to. This book features over 200 stitch patterns that include simple knit and purl, like ribbing, seed stitch, and herringbone. It also includes different cable patterns as well as lace patterns. Each entry contains information about the history of the stitch, the best stitch gauge for achieving pattern definition, and what garments are most suited to the pattern. Of course, it also includes the complete instructions for making the stitch pattern and its variations. The contents are organized into different sections such as cables, lace, and ribbing. There's also an alphabetical index in the back of the book in case you're looking for a particular stitch, you can find it there. The book also contains color photographs of each stitch pattern so you can see what it's going to look like and see if yours is coming out correctly. The only thing is that the pictures are all in the middle section of the book. They aren't on the same page as the pattern instructions, so that is a drawback that some people don't like. This book was published in 2007 and has 295 pages. It's about four and a half inches by six inches and about an inch thick. It weighs less than a pound, so it's very portable and would be easy to carry around in your knitting bag. I looked at the reviews on Amazon and it has a 4.2 star rating. The positive reviewers like the small size, good details and instructions, and interesting new stitches to try. Negative reviews mentioned that they don't like the color photographs being all together in the center of the book, like I said, and that they thought the explanations for knitting pattern abbreviations could be better. But overall, it's well-liked and one of my favorites. And you can get it for around $7 on Amazon. And again, that is the Field Guide to Knitting. Okay, number nine is another one of my favorite reference books. And this one is fairly new, just came out last year, and I think I talked about it in an earlier video. This is The Knitter's Dictionary by Kate Atherley. It is a very nice, slim, hardcover reference book. It has 126 pages that are chock full of knitting terms, tools, and techniques. It's written like a regular dictionary with short entries that define terms and sometimes explain challenging topics in more detail. There are illustrations on some pages, but not all. This book is great if you come across a term, a symbol, or an abbreviation in a knitting pattern that you don't know and need to look it up. Um, what does S2KP mean? Well, it's in there. What is KYOK? It's in there. What is steaking? It's in there. Whether you've come across a new term or just need a refresher on something, it's there in the palm of your hand. This book has a 4.3 star rating on Amazon and positive reviews mentioned how small and portable this book is. You can definitely keep it in your knitting bag. It's comprehensive and contains so much useful information that it would be valuable to all knitters from beginning to advanced levels. Um, negative reviews said there weren't enough illustrations and that some definitions were too short. But again, overall, it's well loved and one of my favorites and you can pick it up on Amazon for around $13. And again, that is the Knitter's Dictionary. Okay, number eight in my countdown is another one of my favorite books, and this one is called Fearless Knitting Workbook by Jennifer Seifert. This is the book I used for my honor seminar in knitting, which I taught for several years. It's definitely for beginners, so if you're just starting out with knitting, or if you teach people how to knit, this would be the perfect resource. It's basically knitting lessons for beginners in a workbook format, just like a workbook you would use in another type of class in school. It starts off with information about tools like different kinds of knitting needles, yarns, and accessories like stitch markers, tapestry needles, and needle gauges. It talks about how to measure a gauge swatch, how your stitches should look on the needle, how to weave in ends, and blocking your knitting. 
It also defines some common abbreviations found in knitting patterns. After that first chapter of general information, you get into specific stitches and patterns, starting out with learning the knit and purl stitches. Each chapter includes several exercises for creating swatches that use the techniques being taught. So chapter two has you practice your knit and purl stitches with a ribbing pattern, a checkerboard square, and some other designs. Each chapter even has an extra credit section that teaches a higher level technique. So along the way, you, know, you learn not only how to do the stitches, but also things like how to use stitch markers and how to read charts. Subsequent chapters show you how to do increases, decreases, cabling, lace work, and knitting in the round. The last chapter is a final exam where you get to put your knowledge to work in making a complete small project. What I love about this book, in addition to the overall structure, is that for each exercise, the author breaks down the pattern line by line, telling you what the abbreviations mean, explaining why we're doing that stitch, and how to read your knitting. So for the rib sampler, you can see the pattern says CO48ST, and then it goes into the translation that that means cast on 48 stitches. Then it explains why we're using the long tail cast on method, and it notes that this cast on method creates a smooth fabric on the front side and a bumpier fabric on the reverse side. So it breaks down literally every line of the pattern to explain what you're doing. All right, so this book is hardcover, spiral bound. It has 160 pages and is about nine and a half inches square. It was published in 2009 and has a 4.4 star rating on Amazon. The positive reviews say that it's great for beginning knitters and that the detailed explanations for every part of the pattern are very helpful. It teaches you how to read your knitting and translates knitting lingo into plain English. It also has tips for avoiding common mistakes when you're learning how to knit. Really, the only negative reviews were complaining that the explanations are too detailed, but that was just a very small number of reviews. I definitely think this book is geared toward novice knitters. I wouldn't recommend it for experienced knitters because it's going to be too basic but I think it's a great resource for someone new to knitting, or like I said, if you teach others to knit. It's a great kind of textbook for that. You can get it on Amazon for under $10. And that again is Fearless Knitting Workbook. Next up is a book that I can't believe I don't have in my library, but it's one of your favorites and that is Knitting Rules by Stephanie Pearl McPhee, which was published in 2006. I have some other Stephanie Pearl McPhee books, but not this one, so I got it from my local library. Um, probably most of you know or are already familiar with Stephanie Pearl McPhee and her blog full of amusing yarn-related stories. Um, this book is written in that same entertaining style, but it also contains a lot of helpful knitting content. It's an easy book to read from beginning to end, and you can also just use it as a reference to look up information you need. The first two chapters are what is knitting and how does it get like this, and yarn and how not to feel guilty about it. There's a helpful section on how to identify mystery yarn, which will undoubtedly come in handy at some point for pretty much every knitter. She covers topics like what are needles made of, 10 reasons to knit socks, how long and wide is an ordinary scarf, and what's the typical head size or foot size, which are useful things to know for making hats and socks when you can't take somebody's body measurements. There's a whole chapter about the importance of gauge and then chapters on various types of projects like hats and scarves. It packs a lot of information into a small six by eight inch book with 224 pages, part how-to manual and part reference book written in a hilarious, delightful style that will keep you smiling and nodding your head. 
it's really appropriate for every level of knitter. On Amazon, it has a 4.7 star rating. On the positive side, commenters appreciate Stephanie Pearl McPhee's sense of humor, the abundant helpful hints, and that this book is entertaining while also teaching. There were only a few negative comments and they said they didn't think the book was funny or they didn't like that it was just a joke book. So it kind of came down to personal style. However, overall, it is extremely loved and you can get it on Amazon for around $10. And again, that is Knitting Rules. Okay, we're down to number six on our top 10 list. And this one is Custom Socks by Kate Atherley. This book is obviously specific to making socks. And if you're interested in knitting socks that actually fit, then this is the book you're looking for. It starts off with comprehensive chapters on sock sizing and then yarn, needles, and gauge. The author takes socks seriously and shows us how to measure feet in order to get on the right track for well-fitting socks. Then she goes into basic sock patterns, knit top down and toe up with tips for stretchy cast-ons and bind-offs. Now, just be aware that the author clearly prefers flap and gusset heels probably because they're easiest to adapt to fit any type of foot. So this is the only kind of heel the book covers. In subsequent sections, she reviews different techniques you might use to customize a particular pattern, like adding lace, color work, and cables. She shares formulas and calculations along with explanations that are needed to produce great socks that you and your recipients will enjoy for years. The last chapter is probably the most unique yet valuable, and that is how to make adjustments for non-average feet. Like, how can you adjust the pattern to fit high arches, or long toes, or larger ankles? This is a pretty big book. It's eight by 11 inches and 191 pages. It contains 15 different sock patterns that can be adapted to fit a variety of foot sizes and shapes. The patterns in this book are beautiful, but the added attention to detail and the specific directions on how to get the best fit take this book to the next level. Any serious sock knitter would definitely appreciate this book. Now on Amazon, it's got a 4.7 star rating. The only real negative comments were that it has some errors in the patterns, but you know, that's probably true of pretty much any pattern book. You can go to the Interweave website and download the errata for this book, so you'll have the corrections to the patterns. On the positive side, lots of commenters said that this book is a great resource for making socks that fit and that they liked that the basic sock patterns are presented in both top down and toe up, so you can knit socks using the method you like best. People liked that it's clearly organized, well-written, and so comprehensive with all kinds of tips and tricks about sock knitting, as well as including beautiful sock patterns. They also noted the helpful tables with foot measurements that are translated into number of stitches to cast on, gusset size, leg circumference, etc. So yeah, it's a popular knitting reference book that you can find on Amazon for around $20. And again, that is Custom Socks. All right, now getting down to number five in our countdown. And this next book is The Knitting Answer Book by Margaret Radcliffe. Whether you're a new knitter or an experienced knitter, chances are you may have had questions about the knitting process, yarn, reading patterns, or something else. And this compact little book answers hundreds of those questions and covers just about everything there is to know about knitting. So how do I start a new ball of yarn in the middle of a project? How do I make my bind off edge match my cast on edge? How much yarn do I need for a long tail cast on? How do I choose the right size from a knitting pattern? Virtually any question you can think of is addressed with clearly written instructions. There are also pictures in places where looking at a picture would help answer a question. Each chapter devotes itself to teaching a particular technique 
or how to avoid problems or mistakes, and how to fix those inevitable errors. This is a cute little paperback book, um, although the cover is pretty firm, and it's about four and a half by six and a half inches. It's definitely compact enough to carry in your knitting bag, yet it offers 439 pages of information every knitter needs to know. It's meant as a quick reference, and the information is presented in question and answer format. There's an index at the end that can help zero in on specific topics you might be looking for. I think this would be a great resource for both veteran and new knitters. Um, this is the second edition and it was published in 2015. On Amazon, it has a 4.6 star rating. There aren't very many negative reviews, but those said that it has too much information and that it's hard to find what you're looking for. I mean, maybe they didn't look in the index. I don't know. But the positive reviews love that this book is small and portable and that it's useful for both beginners and experienced knitters that it contains good instructions and illustrations, and that it so thoroughly explains things. So yeah, this was one of your favorite knitting reference books, and mine too. And you can find it on Amazon for around $13. And again, that is the Knitting Answer Book. Okay, next in our countdown is number four, and that book is The Principles of Knitting by June Hemmons Hyatt. I can't believe this is one I didn't have, so I checked it out of my local library, and all they had was the older first edition. A second updated edition came out in 2012, and it's even bigger than this one with 736 pages. Yeah, so this is a hefty book. It is 9 by 11 inches and weighs about 5 pounds. <laughs> Now, this book can be a little overwhelming because it contains so much information. It is far more thorough in coverage than any of the books I'll talk about today. For example, it covers about 50 different methods of casting on and discusses why one would be more suitable for a particular project than another. This same meticulous treatment is given to binding off, including multiple methods for grafting. It also includes great explanations for left-handed knitters, and it also covers stitches that I've never heard of, like axis cables. You know, I talked earlier about a knitting dictionary, and this is basically a knitting encyclopedia. It is one of the holy grails of the knitting world. I mean, it is huge. It doesn't compare to any other books in my knitting library, and its pages are so densely packed the author tries to fit in everything. But one caveat is that she likes to use her own names for some things, and this can get confusing. For example, she calls knitting through the back loop, knitting far side, and slip slip knit is knit left twist. Now, this isn't true for everything, but for some procedures, she just doesn't use the common terms that you're probably familiar with. On Amazon, it has a 4.5 star rating. Um, negative comments say that the book is too big and heavy and contains an overwhelming amount of information, which I can't argue with. The positive reviews say it's comprehensive in its coverage of everything from cast on techniques to uh, stitch patterns to finishing techniques. It's recommended for intermediate and advanced knitters, but maybe not so much beginners. Um, people think of it as kind of a high-end or high-level textbook or an encyclopedia, like I said. Um, this book is something like a masterpiece, and it's well worth buying. You can get it on Amazon for around $33. And again, that is The Principles of Knitting. Okay, number three in our countdown is also one of my personal favorites, and that is The Knitter's Companion by Vicki Square. This is a cute little hardcover, spiral-bound book that's about six by seven inches that you can lay out flat in front of you while you work. This is the second edition that was released in 2006. There is a newer version that includes a DVD set. It is 138 pages plus a very handy knitting and needle gauge in the back. 
It is the perfect reference guide that I recommend, especially for beginning knitters. It's been popular with knitters for years because it's a quick reference guide for all the important topics like reading yarn labels, making body measurements, um, how to knit using both continental and English methods, reading patterns, casting on, increasing, decreasing, binding off, blocking, and so much more. Each page has drawn illustrations or color photographs depicting the technique or showing what a stitch pattern looks like. On Amazon, it's got a 4.5 star rating. The only real negative comment was that it's too basic. Um, the positive reviewers say it's great for beginners, easy to follow instructions, and has nice illustrations. Uh, people like that it's small, convenient and compact so you can carry it in your knitting bag. They also like the spiral binding and that it stays open on its own for easy reference. So yeah, um, it's definitely a favorite and you can find it on Amazon for around $5. And again, that is the Knitter's Companion. Okay, so now we are down to number two on our list and this one is Vogue Knitting, The Ultimate Knitting Book. This is another one I got from my local library and they only had an older edition. The most recent updated version is the third edition from 2018. This is another book that's quite hefty. It's about 10 by 11 inches and weighs four pounds. The 2018 version has 352 pages, which is 72 pages more than this one has. It is also in the number two spot on the list of best-selling knitting books on Amazon, so you can tell it's pretty popular. Opening up this book to the table of contents, you can see that its subject matter is all color-coded, which is kind of nice to help you find your place if you're thumbing through the pages. The book starts off with a chapter on the history of knitting and then moves into supplies and basic knitting techniques all the way up to designing your own patterns. It ends with chapters on modular knitting patterns and traditional knitting patterns. Each chapter is very thorough and the newest edition includes more cast on, increase, decrease, and bind off methods and sections covering brioche, entrelac, double knitting, and mosaic knitting. There's an expanded section on charts and chart reading and designing different types of shawls. There's also knitter's graph paper in the back for those who are interested in trying their hand at knitwear design. Throughout the book, there are color illustrations and photographs on almost every page. As you can see, this book has a ton of information for knitters at all levels. This is the type of book you could get as a beginner and keep with you as you learn more, or you could pick it up as an advanced knitter to take you to the next level. There's a lot included for designers as well. On Amazon, this book has a 4.8 star rating, um, only a few negative reviews, and they said things like the type is too small and the illustrations were washed out so everything was hard to see. Um, someone said they didn't see much difference between the different editions. Um, and another person was disappointed that the book doesn't contain any patterns. Uh, on the positive side, reviewers said that the instructions were very clear and had good detail and that you can find virtually any topic or technique you need in knitting, um, that it's great for all skill levels, and that it's inspirational, the one knitting book you need. So yeah, if you are looking for a big book of all things knitting, this one would fit the bill and you can get it on Amazon for around $24. And again, that is Vogue Knitting, the ultimate knitting book. All right, and now we are down to the number one knitting book, the one that got the most votes in my Instagram poll. Can you guess what it might be? Is it your favorite? Well, this is the one that the most knitters said they wouldn't want to live without, and it is Cast On, Bind Off. Now, to be fair, one reason why this title might have received the most votes is that there are actually two books with the exact same title, Cast On, Bind Off. They were both, both published in 2012. 
This one I have in my personal library is by Leslie Ann Bestor, and there is another one by Cap Cease. The one by Cap Cease is 8.5 by 11 inches and contains 120 cast on techniques and 80 bind off techniques. It's a hardcover, spiral bound book that's organized by type of cast on and bind off, like decorative, provisional, and tubular. Each technique is presented with step-by-step -step written instructions and illustrations along with a photograph of the finished edge. There are also many specialty cast-ons and bind-offs for things like color work, cuffs, ruffles, and fringe. It's got a 4.5 star rating on Amazon, so obviously knitters like it a lot. The only negative comments were that the book is too big and bulky, the, the same illustrations are used for different techniques, and that there should be more bind-offs included. Now, the cast-on bind-off book by Leslie Ann Bestor is 6 by 7 inches and includes 33 cast-on and 21 bind-offs, so not nearly as many as the other book. Um, it's more of a soft cover, but still spiral-bound, so it lays flat. One nice feature is that the front and back covers highlight quick references to popular cast-ons and bind-offs. The book is organized in sections like stretchy, decorative, and basic. The techniques are also indexed by both name and use, which is helpful for finding a particular one you might be looking for. I like that it also lists alternative names for each, like the Old Norwegian cast-on is also called the Twisted German cast-on or Elastic Longtail cast-on. Another thing I like is that the pages are really sturdy and pretty. I mean, all of the illustrations are full color photographs rather than drawings, and they depict each step of a technique or characteristics of a finished product. So there are a good number of photographs detailing each step. I think this book would be good for beginners who are learning a new technique or for intermediate to advanced knitters who may just need to be reminded of how to do a technique. Now, this book has 4.6 stars on Amazon and the reviews are obviously very positive. The only negative comments that I saw were that the pictures were too small to see what the edges look like, which I personally don't find to be the case. Um, and someone mentioned that they didn't like that you oftentimes have to turn the page right in the middle of a complex instruction, which yes, that is true. Uh, but I don't know how they would be able to fix that problem and fit everything onto one page in a, in a book of this size. So overall in my poll of favorite knitting reference books, these about casting on and binding off were the number one choice if you had to select only one reference book from your knitting library. Now, as far as the difference between the two, um, the Cap Cease book is bigger in size at 8.5 by 11 inches, and the Leslie Ann Bestor book is smaller at 6 by 7 inches. Um, the Cap Cease book is $17, and the Leslie Ann Bestor book is $14. The Cap Cease book has a lot more techniques in it, um, but the Leslie Ann Bestor book has a slightly higher rating on Amazon, um, 4.6 stars as opposed to 4.5 and the Leslie Ann Best Store book is much higher on the Amazon bestseller list. It is number 24 in the in knitting books while the Cap Cease book is number 225. So beyond that I can't really recommend one over the other. This is just the one I happen to have in my personal knitting library. All right, so that is the top 10 knitting reference books based on my Instagram poll and some of my own favorites. So was your favorite included in the list? Let me know down below in the comments which book you would choose as the one knitting reference book you couldn't live without. Now I know that for a lot of knitting questions, we all go to YouTube tutorial videos and find those extremely helpful, and I do that too. But for this, we were wanting to put a list together of favorite books because sometimes you just want to have that static picture or written instructions you can sit and look at and not have to figure out what movement someone is making on a video. So yeah, videos are helpful, 
but sometimes books are helpful too. So let me know down below about your favorite knitting reference books and why you love them. I think it'll be fun to get different people's recommendations so we can look into a variety of books to add to our knitting libraries. And as always, I'll include links to everything I talked about today in the information box right below this video for your convenience. You can go investigate the books and buy them or even look for them at your local public library. I think that's always a nice option that doesn't cost any money. And that brings us to the end of today's video. I want to thank you everybody for taking the time today to watch my show and I'll see you in my next video. In the meantime, stay smart and have a sparkly week.